So right now I'm working with young men, 18 to 35, who are living with HIV, who are black men who identify as gay or bisexual, or if they don't identify as gay or bisexual, they are a man that sleeps with other men. Right. For, for this project, I am working locally, but I'm also um, in the Triangle region. So Raleigh, Durham, and um, wait, Wake County, Durham County, and Orange County. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> and then um, we also opened up a section in South Carolina as well. So we are working with guys in South Carolina. And so what we do is we help them find resources. Uh, um, Pre-COVID, <laughs> we were actually helping them take them to their, to their appointments and resources. Um, so, you know, if someone say, hey, I need a ride to go pay my light bill or something, uh, we will pick them up and go take them so that they could get that done. Because a lot of the guys that we're working with, again, are that, that 18, I would say from 18 to 30, that's the biggest population that has not yet to find what it is to be independent. What it is. And so many times they don't go to their appointments um, because they're too busy working to make sure that they have a roof over their head, that they can have food, um, that, and sometimes that they can keep their lights on, you know, um, because a big part of healthcare is having access to their medication and you have to have an address so your medication can be sent to you. Um, and then some have lots of trauma, traumatic experiences that has happened to them. So they turn to drug use as an easy fix all. And so some do have substance abuse issues while trying to, to live and maintain. So for us on that piece, we try to get them into therapy so they can deal with these traumatic experiences so they can um, reverse their addictions uh, whatever that may be, and so that they can ultimately get the, the proper mental health care uh, that they need. Because even though people live with HIV, there's a lot of people that still don't understand what HIV is. There's many guys that I've come into contact with, uh, and not just with this study, um, who say, you know, I'm living with HIV, but I still don't know what it is. I just know that if you say it, people make a face. In remote areas, there's still a misconception of how HIV is even spread. So HIV can be spread by using the telephone after someone. And so that, but that was a misconception. And so it's like the rhetoric and the stigma of HIV has not changed. And these are the things that we need to focus on in our rural areas and our smaller towns and cities. It's, um, and I've even brought, I've brought this up at so many meetings, <laughs> national meetings, state meetings, conferences, like we have an app that they can use that we give them all sorts, we send them all sorts of resources and information. We, um, there's discussion groups, there's Ask the Navigator, Navigator questions, which um, myself and one other guy, um, Taj, um, has, uh, are, are, are the health navigators. So if they have a question related to health that they don't know or that they're afraid to ask their doctors, we can, if we don't know the answer ourselves, we can ask the doctors, get that information and relay that to them mm -hmm. so that they will at least get that question answered. So we're doing everything virtually. So that means finding ways where people can deliver their medication to them or finding ways where they can pick up their medication from somewhere. I, I have to remind myself that the more the more cases that I see, the louder my voice has to be for them.